Hello everyone, this is Yahya from VR Division and in this beginner tutorial series, you will learn Unreal Engine from scratch. If you want a much faster guide about getting started with Unreal Engine, you can watch my first tutorial. I covered how you can install the engine, how to set up some stuff and how to export your projects from Max to Unreal with the tool of magic, Datasmith. This time I will include timestamps and the cheat sheet for the shortcuts. Links are in the description, subscribe if you're not already, get your coffee, get a glass of water, destroy that like button and let's get started. Unreal Engine is the world's most advanced real-time 3D creation tool. It's a complete suite of creation tools for game development, architecture, automotive, virtual production. It's evolving every day and it gives us creators across all industries the freedom and control to deliver cutting-edge content. So I will assume you already followed my first tutorial, you got Epic Games Launcher and you installed Unreal Engine on your machine. What you need to do now is click Launch. You will notice there are four different categories. Feel free to explore all these categories and their templates. I actually recommend you doing that. It would surprise you. For example, there is this amazing product configurator. In our case, let's click on games, click next, select a blank template, also click next. Let's set a location for our project and give it a name. Let's keep it at blueprint, no ray tracing for now, enable with starter content, and then click on create project. Now, with our project open and ready to go, allow me quickly to break down the user interface of Unreal Editor. The first thing you will notice is the 3D viewport in the middle and the panels on the sides. We call all of this the level editor. This is where the levels are created, viewed and modified, mainly by placing, transforming and editing properties of actors. You can think of a level as a 3D environment into which you place 3D objects and geometry to define the world players will experience. Actors are any object that is placed in your world, like lights, meshes, characters, everything in our world is considered an actor here. Think of an actor as any object that can be placed in your levels. Now let's break down the user interface. The interface in Unreal Engine is highly customizable. It's possible that what you see may change in future. For example, in Unreal 424 and before, <laughs> we had modes, uh, we had the modes tab or panel here. Now it's placed here, but it's okay. Here on the top, we have the tab bar and here you have the name of the level you're currently editing, which is this level. And here you can also dock some windows. For example, tabs from other editor windows like the material or blueprint editors may be docked alongside this tab for quick and easy navigation, similar to a web browser. Here on the right, we have the name of our project. Nice. Here we got our menu bar, which is self-explanatory. There is the help and there is the documentation and I highly recommend reading the documentation. Give the documentation a read, it's a great habit, you will learn a lot. And if you're a nerd like me who likes to read all the time, on the left corner you can select either a light or dark skin so you can read at night. The toolpar panel, like in most applications, is a group of commands providing quick access to commonly used tools and operations. Now let's talk about the viewport. It's basically your window into the words you create in Unreal. It can be minimized and maximized using the ma minimize viewport and maximize viewport buttons located on the top right corner of each viewport. There are two main types of viewports in Unreal, the perspective and the orthographic. The perspective view is a 3D window into the game world. The orthographic views front, side, top are 2D viewports that look down of one of the main axes, X, Y, Z. To switch quickly between the viewport, you can press Alt, G, H, J, and K to switch between perspective, front, side, or top respectively. Let's talk about navigating the viewport. So inside the viewport is where we will do most of our level construction. There are so many ways you can navigate in Unreal Editor viewports. Some can be done entirely with the mouse, with the keyboard, or with a variety of combinations between the two. So if you click and hold or click and drag the left mouse button, you can move the camera backward, forward, and rotate the camera left and right. If you click and hold the right mouse button, this will rotate the camera. 
and this will allow you to look around. Click and drag left mouse button and right mouse button, this will pan the camera. This will move the camera up and down, left and right, based on the mouse movement. In orthographic viewports, the top, the front, the side, clicking and holding the left mouse button will create marquee selection box. Clicking and dragging the right mouse button will pan the camera. Clicking and dragging both mouse buttons will zoom in and out like a dolly. Whether you are at the perspective or the orthographic views, if you select an object or objects and click on F, this will focus the selection. The WASD controls will feel natural if you play video games. They are enabled by default and can be used whenever you click and hold the right mouse button. Click and hold the right mouse button. You will notice that the cursor will disappear when we do this and we can look around. And now I'm going to click on the keys WASD to move around my scene. These keys are mirrored to the arrow keys and to the numpad. So you can do the same when you click on the arrow keys or click on the numpad. These controls are only valid in perspective view. So the addition other than WASD, if you click Q or E, you will move the camera up or down. The same for page up and page down or number seven and nine on the numpad. If you want to increase or decrease the camera field of view, while you're still holding your right mouse button, you can press on Z to zoom the camera out, or you can press on C to zoom the camera in. And when you release your right mouse button, camera will snap back to the default settings. When navigating with WASD when holding down the right mouse button, you can rotate your mouse wheel up or down to increase or decrease the speed of your camera. So rotate it down to decrease the movement and then rotate the scroll up to increase the movement. Or you can change that from here too, from the camera speed. Unreal Editor supports Maya style, orbit and zoom viewport controls, making it much easier for 3D artists to jump into the tool. So if you Alt and left mouse button, you can orbit your view, orbit around a single pivot or point of interest. If you click Alt and right mouse button, you will zoom in and out. If you press Alt and middle mouse button, you will move the camera left, right, up and down based on the direction of your mouse movement. You can change the behavior of your camera to orbit around a specific object. To do that, go to Edit, Editor Preferences, Level Editor, Viewports. In the controls, you can click on Show Advanced and you can enable Orbit Camera Around Selection. And now, as you can tell, the camera is rotate is orbiting around this chair or this table. If you press Ctrl and middle mouse button, you can see this white line. And if you move it, for example, up, you can go to the top view. If you move it down, you go to the button and to the sides. And if you move it down and left or right, you can go back to the perspective. So up, perspective, side, and so on. Let's go to the top view, and I will tell you more about the box selection. If you just click on the left mouse button and drag, you will create a marquee selection. If you press shift and drag, you will add to your selection. If you have an object selected, when you press Ctrl and right mouse button, you can rotate it. If you keep holding Ctrl and click on left mouse button, you can change the transformation. By default, the move tool is always activated. You can change it to rotate or scale by pressing E or R. So it's W, E, R. If you press G, that will toggle the game mode and that will cause the viewport to render only what would be seen in game. F11 toggles immersive mode, which puts the viewport into full screen. Unreal Editor viewports contain a variety of tools and visualizers to help you see exactly the data you need. 
The more common view modes have their own hotkeys, but all can be accessed from the viewport within the viewport mode menu. The most commonly ones for example are lit, unlit, and wireframe. Detailed lighting and lighting only. We will discuss these in details in future tutorials. Now we are done talking about the viewport, let's discuss the panel on the right, the details panel. The details panel contains information, utilities and functions specific to the selection in the viewport. So it changes depending on what you're selecting. It contains transform edit boxes for moving, rotating and scaling our objects. For instance, if we have a static mesh selected, we can change its type from here. Or you can change the material and so on. Same for a light, you can change the intensity of a light or its settings. On this panel here, we used to have something called modes, but now it's here. And this will change the primary behavior of the editor. We can create landscapes, paint foliage, do some vertex painting. I'll explain these in detail and examples in future tutorials. The word outliner panel displays all of the actors within the scene in hierarchical tree view. Actors can be selected and modified directly from the word outliner. If you press shift and click on this small arrow, you can collapse all folders. Or if you want to expand all folders, you can click shift again, click and hold shift and click again and it will expand everything. You can right click actors to view some settings. The same in the viewport. And you can add new folders, click and drag some folders to keep stuff organized. From this panel on the left, you can place actors by clicking and dragging on these actors. You can also place lights, get some cameras, add visual effects like a sky atmosphere or a sphere reflection capture and so on. Here in the content browser panel is where our project lives. If you expand the sources panel, you can see your folder structure. This is the starter content we added. You can navigate by clicking on these folders or by pressing the arrow keys, just like Windows. So now you must be familiar with the user interface. Feel free to play around. In the upcoming tutorials, I will show you how you can create simple levels, create materials, and do some lighting, and import your meshes. Don't forget to download the shortcuts cheat sheet from the description. Subscribe if you're not already. Leave a like if you like the video, a dislike if you don't. Thank you for watching, and take care.